Hello everyone, welcome to Calculus Grade 12 classes and I would like to congratulate you with passing the most hardest part of this course, derivatives. And today we're going to uh, take a look at another really interesting mathematical concept, which is vectors. I'm pretty sure you've heard about them prior to this class in your school studies, but vectors are particularly interesting because they help us to visualize, uh, visualize forces, for example, or vectors can help us to visualize speed and its direction, uh, or vectors can have help us to visualize uh, airflow in a room where we cannot see it. And about those and other interesting properties of vectors in particular, we're gonna talk about today. And I suggest us to move to the lecture material. So guys, uh, just take a few seconds, look through defining the characteristics of vectors. And I'm going to read this for you one more time. So uh, I would uh, keep moving. So in mathematics, uh, you often face certain quantities. Some of those quantities can be easily denoted only by a single number, right? For example, height yeah. or width or length. It just... Uh, School scholars and for vectors, they include in themselves scholars as well as some other interesting properties. Um, because uh, for basically, you yeah. Uh, speed can be either scalar or vector. For example, if we just say that speed is 30 kilometers per hour, it's going to be scalar, right? Yeah. Basically some nominal dimension. Sure. Uh, quantity. Just, yeah. Just a heads up. Actually, I'm, I'm going to mute my mic because I have to, uh, I'm sick right now. So I might cough and sneeze. Uh, sneeze. Yes, so of course, of course, no worries. On and off. Yeah, whatever you prefer. Um, okay, so, and at the same time, uh, but if you say speed is 30 kilometers south, uh, south or northwest, right? Yeah. That when we include vectors. Funny thing, uh, when you look into compass that you have, you usually have an arrow, right? Yeah. And you can imagine that arrow as a vector of magnetic force. Can you guess why? Well, because it's, it's um. A magnetic force is moving the arrow, so. Because arrows are pointing towards north or south pole of a magnet, right? Yeah. And those um, poles are characterized by whether plus or minus, whether they're pulling or whether they're pushing, right? And magnetic force, as many other physical uh, phenomenon, 
has its vector. Um, for example, um, towards north in Earth, you're gonna see a direction of magnetic lines, it's a negative direction, it's blue, right? You remember it's blue and south is red usually. Make sense? Yeah. So um, in this particular case, a compass would basically give you vis visualization of magnetic lines, magnetic vectors, but in physical uh, reality. So you can imagine direction, but you cannot imagine magnitude of those vectors because in compass, it's not up to some scales, right? It just there for us to see. Scale is adjusted in such a way that we can see it with our eyes. But magnitude of a vector in the compass has nothing to do with true force, with true magnitude of the magnetic vectors in the real life that are flying around us, that are surrounding the Earth from every direction. Makes, did you get it? Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, those magnetic vectors may have magnitude 10,000 times greater than amount of centimeters in that line. And never, uh, not always the length, uh, states the length of the initial vector because length of the vectors we can also um, describe in other different um, quantities like Newtons. Yeah. Uh, Newtons is a quantity of force uh, and if you have um, Let's say you you have table in front of you. Yeah. If you put anything on this table, because of the four, because we are on the ground, right? It's not gonna fly up. Yeah. Because we are not on down. Earth. Why yeah. is not is it not flying? Well, because of gravity. And gravity is what? A uh, force. Absolutely right. Uh, basically, gravity, force of gravity is not allowing us to fly into the open space. Yeah. Gravity has acceleration, right? Yeah. Oh, and this is what we want. Remember um, problems involving trajectory of uh, object traveling by a curve? thrown up into the air under certain angle to the horizon, something like that. You remember? Yeah. And now, in every one of those questions, if you involve physics, you talk about 9.8 meter per second squared acceleration of a free fall mm. or g in other words basically this is how we interpret force of gravity on earth that's how we uh, interpret force of gravity on any planet actually we say that the acceleration of free fall on this planet is like that or like that and that's how we define gravity on that for a planet so this acceleration of a free fall is also a vector because let's take a look at the diagram. Imagine this is the Earth, right? Yeah. And we have center core of an Earth here. Imagine if object is dropped down on the ground from certain height, I don't know, some height. Yeah. That makes sense. And you know that force of gravity points towards the middle of an earth. It's kind of intuitive understanding. So here, 
along this perpendicular line basically yeah or at 90 degree to the surface of a north right yeah i'm gonna have a vector of uh, uh, for gravity and this vector is going to have direction and magnitude right yeah great and for for you usually don't scale this magnitude like one centimeter equals one meter per second squared right you don't do that you just note magnitude of a vector afterwards in your notations and we're going to look into it uh, usually magnitude of a vector is called its modulo modulo of a vector let's say let's say we have vector um let's say we have gravity force of gravity vector right 9.8 meters per second squared if i plot it on um 2D dimension, Y and X, what would be direction of my vector? Down. Down or negative direction, right? Yeah, negative, yeah. So my acceleration of a free fall would be used in my calculations as negative 9.8 meters per second squared, right? If I, if I have body that, for example, is thrown upwards with initial speed of two meters per second in y direction then acceleration of a free fall would have a negative would be negative in this case for me so this is one of the examples of direction of vectors how we did with speed remember how yeah. you're getting closer or farther away from a point but at the same time the modular the magnitude of my vector is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared, not negative. Magnitude of a vector is always positive. Yeah. So, any questions so far? No. Mm -hmm. So, let's move on with the book. Uh, we're gonna continue from here some examples of scholars are age volume area speed mass and temperature on the other hand some quantities such as weight velocity or friction require both a magnitude and a direction for a complete description and they are called vectors do you see here yeah weight considered um, weight considered the vector because weight depends on force of gravity and mass you see yeah i see basically uh, here we can see mass as a scholar uh, scholar and here we see weight as a vector but you ask me what is the difference between mass and weight weight of you on the moon and weight of you on the earth is different yeah it is there's but different. your mass is the same yeah mm -hmm. so your weight is different because it's your mass times the acceleration of free fall or force of gravity yeah so it's interesting thing to notice mm. <clears throat> because and you also need this basically direction for your weight because what if this planet has uh i don't know 
some kind of reverse polarities and uh, instead of pulling us to the ground we are being pushed away would we still have weight on this uh, planet or would we be weightless well, what was the question I can say um, imagine if uh, on the earth instead of being pulled towards yes. it we would be pushed away from it um, would that mean uh, we don't have any weight on this ground or, or it would just yes. mean only be, another direction for the weight or it would be another direction absolutely right and that's why it is important it's not something impossible right we should mm -hmm. consider math so it can explain anything and uh, cases like negative mass that are going to give us this type of gravity that is pushing instead of pulling this is also one of the examples why we need to consider vectors as a complex quantity so defining the characteristics of vectors a vector can be represented by a directed line segment as i showed you a directed line segment has a length called its magnitude and a directional indicated by an arrowhead yeah i want you to remember magnitude as a length of a vector right because later on talking about vectors uh let's take a look here here on my 2d dimension do you see it later you're gonna plot vectors as two points joined together okay mm -hmm. and that's why i want you to remember magnitude as the length of a vector because magnitude is nothing more than modular of this length Okay, it's ju I'm just saying that vectors are usually not scaled. They're, we don't care about their magnitude when we visualize them. Because I bet you've seen many pictures like, you know, magnetic field and ma many, many, many small arrows there. Or for example, fluid flow, many, 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 many small arrows again, right? Mm. In diagrams like that, people don't care about uh, actual magnitude. But when you solve mathematical problems, you do care about the magnitude in, uh, as length of a vector. When you plot those vectors on a discrete um, to the sphere, uh, to the um, dimension, you want to plot them as you plotting graphs, for example, as you plot parabolas, you want to plot them by points, spe specifically by two points at least, because one point is not a vector. Yeah. Or it's a vector with zero magnitude. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Point. It's a vector with no magnitude. The diagram below can help to make the distinction between a vector and a scholar. If an airplane is traveling at a speed of 500 kilometers per hour, this description is useful, but for navigation and computational purposes, incomplete. If we add the fact that the airplane is traveling in a north easterly direction we now have a description of its velocity because we have specified both its speed and direction this defines velocity as a vector quantity if you refer to the speed of the airplane we are describing it with just a single number which defines speed as a scalar quantity yeah and here 
Here is the drawing that they were talking about. You see, here, this is the notation of vectors. Please take a notice. Um, for example, if you have an arrow that starts at A and points towards B, vector would be notated as A, B, and arrow above it. On the other hand, if it starts in B, ends up in A, it's going to be B, A with arrow. Please copy this into books. So in this diagram, AB is an example of a vector. In this case, yeah, sorry. In this case, it is a line segment uh, running from A to B with its tail to A and head to B. Its actual size or magnitude is denoted by uh, modular A to B. And the magnitude of a vector is always non-negative. The vector AB could be used to represent the velocity of any airplane heading in a northeasterly direction at 500 kilometers per hour using a scale of one centimeters to 100 kilometers per hour. An example, a modular AB, modular vector AB equals five centimeters. Then what it means, it means we are traveling with a speed of 500 kilometers per hour. The direction of the arrow represents the direction of the airplane and its length represents its speed. You see, so size, the some length of an arrow depends on how strong or big or fast or wherever something is. Yeah. Because now you see, we already discovered two vectors. Now we have vector of a speed and vector of acceleration. Right? Yeah. If I'm putting something on the table, there are a vector of force occurring. First of them is the weight that is pushing on the table. It's a force that coming from an object that I put on a table, right? It's weight. Weight is also a vector. Uh, usually you can see them in the diagrams for airplanes where they have, you know, pitch, roll, yaw, and weight is going to be the thing that counterparts um, Lift. Yeah. We're going to have lift and weight. We're going to have drag and thrust. These are four vectors that you can impl implement in, for example, airplanes. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. So in the diagram, I think it's clear, we can move on. So in the diagram on the previous page, BA is a vector pointing from B to A. The vector BA represents an airplane traveling in the southwesterly direction, 500 kilometers per hour. Note that the magnitude of the two vectors are equal. See, magnitude equal, but direction is different. Yeah. What is a vector? A vector is a mathematical quantity having both magnitude and direction. 
summing up the first part of a clause. Please write it down, write down this definition. Okay. Okay, I think we can move on. Yeah, I got it. Perfect. Opposite vectors. This is how you can denote vectors without their modulo. So we discovered that these two vectors are equal by their modulo. Both of them, for example, have a velocity of 500 kilometers per hour but in different direction so we say their modulus is equal can we go back and to the last uh, the slide i almost finished the writing this one yeah i just got it i got it i had the last word i didn't get the last word mm -hmm. so and now uh, opposite vectors we also can represent them without modula but with minus minus tells us that direction is opposite a b does not equals b a but minus b a equals a b okay yeah in this case their magnitudes are same And the vectors are parallel, but point in opposite directions. You see, it's uh, really important that they're parallel in this case. Yeah. Vectors can also be represented with lowercase letters. Oh, by the way, if 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 my vector would be pointing towards the left, but not like that, but like this, for example. Would I still call it, uh, would I still just say AB equals negative BA? Mm. What do you think? If my vector wasn't parallel, but would be on angle? No. No, why? It would be equal to the X component, the X component, not the total. So X Absolutely right. It would be, uh, we would still use minus, but we're going to say that it, by modula they're not equal. So we would have to multiply by sine or cosine of an angle between them. So AB would be equal to X component of this vector, for example. If we have another vector right here, perpendicular to AB, this would be a second component of this vector at, a, at an angle, right? Yeah. That's really cool that you already can understand it. So vectors can also be represented with the lowercase letters. Uh, with lowercase letters, we represent them uh, as a single letter, not two letters. So big letters are points. Small letters are just names. Vector V, vector velocity, vector G, acceleration of a free fall. Yes? Yeah. Great.
uh, no mention has yet been made of using coordinate systems to represent vectors. In the diagram below, it is helpful to know that A equals 2.0, 2 comma 0 is a vector having its tail at the origin and the head at 2 comma 0. Yeah. This vector has magnitude of 2. In example, modulo of A equals 2. And also observe that negative vector A equals negative 2 comma 0. And modula of negative vector A equals 2. The vector A and negative A are opposites. So, Um, yeah, I think there is nothing really to explain here. It's self-explanatory. Yeah. It's just a, one of the examples how we can defer vectors. And you can see difference in their notation depending on their direction. Yeah. But it's not always appropriate or necessary to describe a quantity by both a magnitude and direction. For example, the description of the area of a square or rectangle does not require a direction, right? Uh, it's um, for us, it's a scholar. In referring to a person's age, it is clear what is meant by just the number we shouldn't mention that this person is aging and not getting younger, right? And referring to a person's age, it's clear what it means. Uh, by their nature, quantities of this type do not have a direction associated with them and thus are not vectors. Do you think time is vector? Yeah. Um, I it is. Well, oh, time time is a vector, no. Is it? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I will leave it for you to think because it's it's more of a philosophical question. <laughs> so. Um... Uh, vectors yeah. are equal or equivalent if they have the same direction and the same magnitude. I would say time's the... a vector. Sorry. <laughs> uh... But, mm, okay, let, let me finish and then we can discuss this topic, okay? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So but then you can ask me any question. Vectors are equal or equivalent if they have the same direction and the same magnitude. This means that the velocity uh, vector for an airplane traveling in the easterly direction at 400 kilometers per hour could be represented by any of the three vectors in the following diagram, right? All of these three vectors, as you can see here have same modula, they just start at different point and end up in different place. But modula is the same for them. Yeah. Or magnitude. I just call it modula because uh, it's, it's denoted as modula. Module of a vector. This is what you may also hear from people from other countries who study math. So. Notice that any of, uh, any one of these vectors could be a trans, could be translated to be 
coincident with either of the other two. When vectors are translated, it means they are picked up and moved without changing either their direction or size. This implies that the velocity vector of an airplane traveling at 400 km per hour in an easterly in an easterly direction from Calgary is identical to that of an airplane traveling at 400 km per hour in an easterly direction from Toronto. Note that in the diagram of, oh yeah, yeah, yeah this is really important. Um, so we realize that we can say that two vectors are basically identical. Yeah. If they have same magnitude and same direction. Same basically it means they're parallel and parallel equal and co-directed okay. because we still can have parallel vectors but they directed to the opposite direction those vectors won't be equal note that in the diagram above we have all we all we have also used lowercase letters to represent the three vectors uh, it is convenient to write the vector a b as p for example and it's in this case p equals q equals r yes so for vectors don't be shocked we have uh, very different letters to use because it's just notation as a b c okay yeah some of the vectors are uh, usually have their own name for example a uh, vector of force. It's noted like this. Yeah. Ve vector of velocity. It's noted like this. Vector of acceleration. Vector of. Um, no, for what else? Vector of. Uh, hmm. Okay. Let let let's play quick game try to remember something from real world and tell it to me what else it could be okay. wait wait no alan what did you say we have to <clears throat> we have to say something from about, about what hmm? Sorry. what do you want to say I, I want you to come up with notation or come up with something some some vectors from that you know in real life okay <clears throat> we, we already noted force velocity acceleration weight um Would a ceiling fan be one? Hmm? A ceiling fan? Like. Ceiling fan? Yeah. I like a fan. Yeah. Okay, so airflow. Uh, good, good example. <clears throat> Velocity <clears throat> and volume. Uh, for example, our volume can also have a vector because if we talk about let's say we have a fan right let, let me try to so we have certain fan right here right and it blows an air out of it and we have certain amount of air that is going out from it every second right and the amount of air that is getting out from the fan every second, we can be described as volume per second. Well, and it, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, you see it? Because for example, if I blow air really quick, 
I will blow out, let's say, 10 cubic centimeters of air every second. And I will blow it towards specific direction. Yeah. This air would have its velocity and etc. Yeah, good example. Mm -hmm. Because it was really hard because I noted all of the common vectors. It's really hard. It, it's it's hard to develop a will. So two vectors a and b and c d are equal or equivalent if and only if a and b and c d are parallel to each other, and the direction for from a to b is the same as the direction from c to d, as I said. Remember, the magnitude of A, B equal of the magnitude of C, D. Please write down this definition. Let me know once we're ready to move on. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Okay, okay. Yusuf, what were you? Hey, yeah, I got it. Okay. Oh, so dun, dun, dun. where is it? <clears throat> I had one more example. Just a second. Here it is. Alan, can you read this example for me? Yeah. Just a second. <clears throat> I'll also bring in the summary as well. Okay. Um, example one. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Example one. Uh, Connecting vectors to um, two dimensional. I'm trying to, yeah. Connecting vectors to two dimensional figures. Rhombus, A, B, B, and D is drawn and it's two and, and it's two diagonal diagonals AC and BD are drawn as shown. Name vectors equal to each other as to each of the following. Okay, stop there. Let's start uh, with A B. Okay. So can you answer me right away which one is equal to A B? Uh D C. Yeah, it's, I think it's pretty obvious, right? Mm -hmm. What about DA, Yusuf? DA? Um... Which one is equal to DA? 
D A um like equal to So um, vectors are equal if they're parallel and pointing towards same direction. Oh, okay. So then it would be BC. A C B specifically, yeah. because if vector D A, then equal one to it is C B that yeah. starts in this that moves towards the same direction. Yeah, okay. because before that, we didn't care about direction when we were talking about magnitude of stuff. And now when we talk about vectors, basically direction is one of the two things that we care about, magnitude and direction, right? How we yeah. can forget about it. We should always take it into account. Okay? Okay, yeah. And a uh, more scientific approach in this exercise, not just to look at the rhombus and see which one is uh, same or not the same the right approach would be to remember that rhombus is a parallel parallelogram right with its oppo opposite sides parallel makes sense yeah that makes sense so every opposite side in rhombus is equal by its magnitude first of all and secondly it, they're parallel uh -huh. they're not intersecting Okay, yeah. And that's what we need for vectors to be equal. Now we just need to define where to sketch a point and where to sketch an arrow, where the end and where the end of the vector. And it's, for example, a vector A, B, where's the start and where's the end? Uh, for which one? For vector A, B, where start and where is the end of it? Uh, like there, A, B. So no, 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 no. Say start at hmm, start. and at... Hmm. Start at bottom and at the top? Or? Well, if we're talking about vectors, I would rather call points. Oh, so like start at point... I'm not sure, like, uh, how to say. Like, you want to say like positive, negative, or a vector a b starts in point a and goes to point b, basically. Oh, okay, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. The same with d a. D a starts in d and in a. It's but so order of letters in the name of vector is really important. If you say A B equals D C, you would be hundred percent right. But if you say A B equals C D, you would be hundred percent wrong. Okay, yeah. And it wouldn't be like minor mistake, right? Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to give you 50%. Fifth, yeah. Half of it you got right. Yeah, it's it's a big mistake. Because vectors, <laughs> this is basically why we bring in vectors into mathematics, because we want to give direction to stuff. Because before that, we were able to uh, only describe the quantity of things. And now with vectors, we can also describe its direction. Yeah. Because and direction wouldn't be always linear. It wouldn't be always so easy to understand. So uh, we're going to start to break up, for example, tra trajectory. You know, when I throw a ball on a curve and it flies in the curve, it's not flying in a line, right? But, for example, at every instantaneous moment in time, it has horizontal uh, horizontal part of its velocity, vertical part of its velocity, right? Guys? Yeah. For example, my x <clears throat> speed and my y speed. When, when the ball is thrown at an angle to a horizon, 
-hmm. it has an initial velocity mm -hmm. which then spent uh which then compensated by force of gravity, right? Force of gravity is acting in y axis, so it's our y component. So now, if I plot a ball, for example, imagine x is a length, how far I throw it, right? And y is the height. High, how, I, high, how high I can throw it. And a y equals zero is going to be the ground level. OK? Yeah. And let's say I'm a baseball player. I'm the best baseball player you know. I'm just like, yell, yay, yell, 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 yell uh, what, what, what would you call it? Yelling. No, no, throwing, okay, throwing oh, the ball, pitching, pi oh, pitching. pitching yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, pitching a ball, but upwards, like I want to kill a satellite on a near Earth's orbit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm throwing it really far. See, I have, and imagine I throw it in a straight line. It goes, goes, but it simultaneously goes in Y and X direction, right? Yeah. Simultaneously in X and Y direction. X Y direction, yeah. And here we are ready to talk about, uh, you know, components of a vector. Alan already told us about it before in this class. And here, um, let's say, oh, trajectory of my ball would be something like this. So here you can see that my x component would be always parallel to the ground and in this in ideal situation would be always the same when i throw a ball only its y component will change over time because my initial uh, velocity of a ball and depending on that and an angle to horizon is also important because using that, I will calculate my y component, right? <laughs> using this angle to the horizon. Yeah. And specifically, if you want to split up a vector that is not coaxial with y or x direction, you want to split it in y and x component. You're going to use sine and cosine. It's really simple as that. Basically, what we get here with three vectors is a right triangle. If you see, if you add up this vector, vector along x-axis and vector along y-axis, resulting will be the diagonal of this square okay you see imagine we have horizontal and vertical vectors like this if you add them up resulting quantity would be a diagonal of this square Make sense? Diagonal includes in it elevation that gives you y component and displacement in x direction that gives you x component. And all over together, you're getting a diagonal vector. 
if you add up vector y, for example, plus vector x, you're going to get this diagonal vector. So any questions? Sorry? Any questions about this? Uh, no, no questions so far. OK, so. Um... So let's talk about this rhombus a little bit more. So since the diagonals in the rhombus bisect each other, right? Yeah. So they split in half each other. And so we can say first half of a diagonal equals the second half. And if we just call it like A, E, E, C, those two vectors would be equal. Note that uh, if the arrow had been drawn from C to D instead of D to C, the vectors A, B, and C, D would be opposite and would not be equal, even though they're of the same length. If these vectors are opposite, then the relationship between them can be expressed as A, B equals negative C, D. This implies that these vectors have the same magnitude but opposite direction. Yeah. If they won't have opposite direction, but they may, let's say they're at an angle to each other. For example, in this case, vector x would be equal to uh, cosine alpha, alpha is an angle to a horizon, cosine alpha times vector of velocity that we throwing our ball with, right? Yeah. So vector x, com x component of this vector of velocity would be cosine alpha. And what would be the y component? Um, sorry. Of course, it would be sine alpha. So in our discussions of vectors thus far, we have illustrated our ideas with geometric vectors. Geometric vectors are those that are considered without reference to coordinate axis. The ability to use vectors in applications usually requires us to place them on a coordinate plane. These are referred to as algebraic vectors. Mm -hmm. They will be uh, they will be introduced in the exercises and examined in detail in section 6.5, blah, blah. This we are not interesting at. We are interested in this summary. Can you see it well? Yeah, I can see. Um, yeah. This should be better. So key ideas. A vector is a mathematical quantity having both magnitude and direction. For example, velocity. Uh, I want you, for next class, write down a list of 10 vectors. Okay. Okay. Whoever does it gets an extra mark for home assignment that, for example, you submit it late or wherever, wherever. I want you to go into internet and read about vectors and find me 10 vectors. And if you can surprise me, maybe I will even give you two points. Okay. Yeah. So a scalar is a mathematical quantity having only magnitude, for example, speed. And another task that you can choose, um, explain me, like in, the, in a few minutes, difference between scalars and the vectors. I want you to understand it and to be able to talk about it. I don't want you to be those guys who don't know that vectors exist. I want you to be those guys that can use vectors for their own good. 
So you need to know AB represents a vector running from A to B with its tail at A and head at B. A modula or magnitude AB represents the magnitude of a vector. The vector AB and BA are opposite if they are parallel and have the same magnitude but opposite direction. Two vectors AB and CD are equal if they are parallel and have the same magnitude and the same direction. Hmm. And uh, yes, that's it. That's it for today. This is just hmm. an introduction. I want you to go through vectors on your own while preparing. I just did a quick search right now to see if I could get any. And uh, no, I, no, I don't little... need them now. I don't need them okay. now. Read about it on your own and tell me in the next class, OK? okay. And one more thing I want to tell you guys. When I started studying vectors, I start to reconsider my and everything that I do. Because, for example, when you shake on a chair, you're not thinking about any vectors in particular. But try to search on YouTube visualization of vectors. And you're going to see that it's so fascinating thing. For example, when uh, our vector of weight in our body is located in our hips because it's center of mass for us. Yeah. And weight is pulling us down directly in our hips. So let's say if I'm trying to tilt on my uh, chair, right? My points of contact with ground is four mm, chair legs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I start tilting backwards, I reduce this amount to two uh, legs of chair, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm playing yeah. around in a class. Uh -huh, I'm not interested in the subject. I'm just dancing on my chair. Now I have two. Um, mm -hmm. well, let me draw it to you. Now I have two legs, and my chair is already like this. Even, even worse. It's, it's, it's like this, right? I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge, and to balance mm -hmm. myself on a chair. So basically, this is the ground, and this is how ground pushes my chair because of my weight. And or this is the axis, this is the direction in which my chair pushes on the ground. And let's say I'm sitting here right in the middle, and this is my weight pulling down. And you can know if if I start sitting here closer to the back, my vector start pushing here, right? Yeah. And now look at it, how it can balance. It cannot balance at all, right? Yeah, it can't balance. Because we have a leverage. Um, but it's because we displace the vector away from... Um, point of the balance if we would keep our vector of weight if we would sit directly on the on this point then we may not fall and we may still be able to maintain some balance this is what you see in uh, Shaolin monarch uh, performance when they sit on a nail or do something like that they basically of, of course, they show you their training, but in order to do that, they using vectors, forces, directions, magnitudes. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting thing to study. So I hope guys, you interested in this topic and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next class on Monday. And please do your homework and let's keep in touch. Good luck. Good luck to you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your class. Goodbye.